Hey Ben, how's it going? I finished the video with my edits. I plan to publicly um, release it on the 16th, so that's Saturday. Does do you guys want to see it? Since I'm gonna I'm gonna make it public anyway, and maybe you can give me feedback if I was too rough on the company, which which as you know, I pretty much never am. I just tell the truth. Okay. Um, so we'll go through it and then uh, you can tell me. If I went overboard or, and I'll tell you what I changed. I didn't really change much. So obviously I added that. I added that to every video now. Just, I don't know, the lawyer said it can't hurt. Um, this video is not intended for, to be invested in advice is my opinion using publicly available information. Obviously we all make mistakes. If almost every finance video I watch is full of mistakes. Like they just say things because they think it sounds smart. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, so it's the same thing. Like you can't, okay, I'll, I'll keep going. Pulse's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if to buy or sell. Dark Pulse has two security platforms, Fiber and Ultra High. I did change the beginning because I didn't have, I, I bought this video service. So that's why I've been adding videos to my, the beginning. So I changed the beginning. It didn't have these nice videos in it originally. Sensitivity sensors. It uses advanced laser-based systems to provide rapid and accurate monitoring of temperature. Oh, entertainment purposes only. Yeah, that's a good idea. I forgot about that. strains and stresses. It can be used for pipeline monitoring, perimeter and structural surveillance, aircraft structural components, and mining safety. The company's fiber-based monitoring systems can detect a change in strain or temperature. Strain is the deformation of an op. Yeah, the lawyer pretty much said, I don't have to take anything out because as long as, he said, he said, well, two lawyers, I, one yesterday and one today, I, I got two lawyers. They both said the same exact thing. Uh, if, if he wanted to move forward with suing me, um, that would be a big hurdle to find a lawyer to take that case. So if he did get to that step to actually sue me, then he'd have to tie it, my video, to the, the decrease in his stock price, which is like impossible because I don't have any views. If I was like one of the top finance guys, uh, what's that guy? Graham Stephan. If I was Graham Stephan, maybe he could say, look, he has 10 million views. Um, For example, if their software was being used to monitor the tracks of a railroad, if the size of the tracks changed with temperature or damage, this system can detect that. So you can see it could be really helpful for airplanes and also for mining and construction. The company's patented BOTDA dark pulse sensor technology allows for the monitoring of highly dynamic environments due to its greater resolution and accuracy. Its offerings include a full suite of engineering, installation, and security management solutions to industries and governments. The company recently announced the acquisition of Teradata Unmanned, which is a drone-based company offering multiple platforms, including underwater capabilities. That means their software can be used underwater to track the temperature and change of an object, which could be really beneficial to the shipping industry. Teradata offers 3D mapping for industrial applications, such as 3D mapping of a waste management facility. It was originally started in 1989 as Cleaver Marketing. Cleaver's wholly owned subsidiary was Dark Pulse Technologies. I could see him like saying, like, why do you even talk about Cleaver? That was 30 years ago. But I mean, 
I just think it's interesting to see the how companies evolve. Um, I don't think it's relevant at all, but I think it's just interesting how they come about. Like it start it started as a subsidiary of this company, and and then it became its own company, and it it got spun off. Oh. as Cleaver Marketing. Cleaver's wholly owned subsidiary was Dark Pulse Technologies. Dark Pulse originally started as a tech spin out from the University of New Brunswick in Canada. In July 2018, the company changed its name from Cleaver to Dark Pulse, and the ticker was changed to DPLS. The company's headquarters are in New York City and is currently trading on the pink sheets. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 431 million market cap, but trading at nine cents a share, and they have 4.8 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flows cap. Should I keep playing it? Do you guys want to see the whole thing? Let me know if, if I should keep playing or not. I don't know if this is boring. I could I could tell you the the two points I think he doesn't like. Um, cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. It's just a so guess. They don't have much free cash flow each year since they're still free revenue. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also negative every year. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales, which is zero every year. In this article, someone asked the CEO when they will start generating revenue. He said in Q3 of this year. So they should be generating revenue right now. We won't find out for sure until they're... Somebody left a comment on the old video, on the old video saying like, it, it's it's wrong. Well, you made mistakes. And I go, what was wrong? He said the entire video. Like, it's just like, you get no information. I did change something because the only thing I think I made a mistake on, I'll show you what it is. They report their next 10Q. Below revenue is their operating expenses. Their biggest operating expense is general and administrative. That was 149. See, I kept saying million because I was so used to Yahoo Finance, everything in thousands. So he really, he focused on that. So I, I fixed it. And every time I said it, you, you hear that noise. Million. That's mainly the money they pay to consultants because they don't really have many employees on staff. According to their 10K, they only have one full-time employee. See, I try to like put pictures of the 10K so nobody could blame me for just making things up. Everything is straight from their reporting. Employee and no part-time employees. So it looks like they pay a lot of consultants. They did have a lot of payroll and compensation in 2019, but only any in 2020. They spent 15 million in legal fees, 7.9 million in debt transaction expenses. These are the expenses related to taking on debt. When I said that these are the ex expenses directly related to taking on debt, I wasn't too sure about that. I just assumed it based on the name, but I, it, it is that once I pulled it from the 10 K on this video, I didn't have these pop-ups originally. So it's, it definitely is. And when they acquire a company, sometimes those companies have patents. So they put the patent on their balance sheet and amortize it onto the income statement each year. So it looks like they pass through $51 million of amortization expenses each year on its patents. Um, so far, is anything really harsh? I mean, it is the financials. I, I can't really like, I'm just saying what they are, I'm, which I do every video. Um, they do have a little debt on their balance sheet. So they paid over 400,000 of interest on their debt in the trailing 12 months. And they have negative net income every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses or generates from its operational business. So they did have positive operating cash flow in 2020, negative in the other years. Here. I watched a, another YouTuber show the statement of cash flows, and she's like, 
they had positive operating cash flow in 2020, so things are improving for the company. But they have no revenue, so it, there's no way it could be improving. I mean, you're not imp improving cash flow. The only way you could get positive operating cash flow is what I say here, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You're pre-revenue. You need to generate. You need to spend cash. You can't make money if you have no revenue. Um, come on. A loan from the credit card company. You have to pay that loan back. So it's just a timing thing. Ninety-six million of product. You okay. In twenty twenty, negative in the other years. Here's a breakdown of their operating cash flow from their ten k. And the way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, then you add or subtract the non-cash items on the income statement, then you adjust for changes in working capital. So the main reason they had positive operating cash flow is because they used a lot of credit. They bought one hundred ninety-six million of product using accounts payable. So this is more of a timing thing. They should have had negative operating cash flow in this period. They're just going to have a bigger negative when they pay the accounts payable. Like, for example, if you have $10,000 of cash in a the bank, then you buy $10,000 of electronics, but you use your credit card to pay for it. You still have the $10,000 of cash in your bank, but those electronics were a loan from the credit card company. You have to pay that loan back. So it's just a timing thing. So you're going to have to pay it back, and when you do, that $10,000 in cash will go away, but you'll still have the 10,000 of electronics. If a company has positive operating cash flow because they used a lot of credit, I wouldn't consider that a good thing. But if another company had lots of operating cash flow because they were really profitable on their income statement, that's a good thing. And they spend a little on CapEx each year. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. Since they're losing cash each year, they're running their business on debt. They added 1.1 million of debt in 2018, 180,000, then another 1.1 million. This is the. What, what I say in my videos often, and this is not a, a bash at the company, I feel like everything I say um, about the, when I do this video, like I'm so, I'm so nervous about saying the wrong thing. Um, when you're pre revenue and you have no cash flow coming in, it's, I think, and maybe I could be wrong. I'm sure the CEO can probably explain it a lot better than me. But I think it's risky to take debt on because you have to pay the interest on your debt, right? And what happens when you can't pay the interest on your debt? Well, that's a definition of bankruptcy, when you can't pay the interest on your debt. So so, so when you have no revenue coming in, you just you issue stock. You keep diluting your shareholders, and that's how you raise capital. Um, and I thought... When you take on debt, that's like the last case scenario. That's kind of like when you're at your rope's end, you take on debt to try to keep the business going or to, or to try to stay out of, to try to pay your bills. Um, but I don't know, like that's just what I understand from finance. And I'm not definitely not saying that about this company. That's just how I understand things. And, but this is what I think pisses them off, but it's, it's just my guess. I could be wrong, but this, I think this is my analogy on this one. Come on. Does that make sense about the debt? I mean, maybe I'm ignorant on this stuff, but that's just how I understand it. This is the equity section of their balance sheet, and this is as of 6 30, 2021. So they have negative 3.6 million of equity. They raised about $2.8 million from issuing stock, 477,000 from common stock, and 2.4 million from additional pain of capital. So that's about $2.8 million they raised from selling their business. And they lost 6.7 million from running their business. These are all terms I kind of came up with as I was doing videos. When, when a company sells stock, I say they're selling their business, which they are doing. When you own stock, you own part of the business. They may not be selling the entire business. Maybe the, the executives still own 50%. It's possible, but you're pretty much selling your business. And when you accumulate a deficit, which is retained earnings, that's how much money you 
profit at a loss from running a business. So I just use these simple terms to convey the message. It's accumulated deficit is a sum of all your prior net incomes. So if you had a business and you wanted to get more funding for that business and you ask a friend, will you buy my business for $2.8 million, but I'll still run the business and take a salary, but you own 100%. So you get all the excess money and say your friend gives you a check for $2.8 million and you run the business, but you run out of that money and now you need to take on debt. So you add 4 million of debt and you lose all that money. So you lost the $2.8 million your friend gave you to buy the business. Then you lost about $4 million in debt that you got from family, friends in the bank. Now you pretty much have no cash in the bank and all you can show for it is a business that lost nearly $7 million. If I came up with this kind of analogy as I was doing the videos. So I do take, so if there's anything wrong with those statements, I take full credit, but I'm pretty sure that's accurate. And I'm pretty sure that's a very simple way to explain the equity section. Um, and, and I can't prove he took 4 million of debt on, but I don't know how you would get, lose $7 million where the other money came from. If you went through your equity, the equity raise, um, and they don't have cash on a balance sheet, but that's a timing thing. That could just be this quarter, next quarter, they could have a lot of cash. The balance sheet is just a snapshot at a point in time. If their technology is really good, and if they can prove they're getting close to monetizing it, then they'll be able to get more loans or maybe even sell more stock and dilute the current shareholders. So they obviously need to raise more capital to stay in business. I took out a, a snippet there. I said in my earlier one, I said, um, I'm not saying this is a bad investment and you shouldn't invest in this company. I'm just saying they need to raise capital Something like that. I can't remember what I said, but so I took it out because I didn't want to, anything to come off that I was trying to bash them at all. Just trying to present the facts. Let's look at the capital structure. They have negative four million of equity, so their liabilities are four million dollars more than their assets, and they have two million of debt. And their weighted average cost of capital ten percent, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value because all cash flows past year four, that's 591 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company $431 million. We divide that by 4.8 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of nine cents. So give me feedback. Let me know if there's anything, because I didn't post it yet. Although I'm doing it, kind of posting it now, I guess, live. But um, let me know if there's anything that you feel is 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 not is not accurate or sounds a little too misleading. Um, that was I wanted to get that info from them, so I understood. Hey, Drag Gaming, thanks for coming. I'm just, show I'm just showing you what their free cash flows we need to be to justify a nine cent stock price. This is just one scenario. Another scenario is we could smooth out this 43 million over 2021, 22, 23, and 24, and give them positive each of those four years and come up with nine cents. Or we can give them negative free cash flow for another 10 years and then positive after that. This is just one scenario. So do you think they can get positive 43 million of free cash flow by 2024? The average company converts 10% of their revenue to free cash flow. So this implies they would need 430 million of revenue by 2024. If you think they can do that, then maybe the stock is a buy. This stock was well under a penny last year. Then it shot up to five cents around February. It came back down. Then it shot way up to over 20 cents. So there's a lot of interest in this stock. Even though they don't have revenue, it seems like they're getting closer to getting revenue. I say positive things like if if I really shorted the stock, I would kind of like tear them apart a little bit more. I, I easily could. I could like I told this guy once, uh, Nick, the guy who did a live stream. I said, "Give me any company, and I could convey an amazing company, and you should buy it." And that same exact company, I can convey it's a terrible company. You shouldn't buy it. Not that I would do that, but 
it's easy to do those things. So that's why I say you kind of have to do your own due diligence and you can't listen to others because they'll just present their angle. And they are making some acquisitions. So maybe that's another reason people are buying the stock. They have a beta of negative one. I think short interest is coming up. If the market, I don't know. I don't even know. I didn't even know you could short a nine cent stock. Like, I mean, you could make nine cents, but like, think about it in theory. Like, you short something that's high, right? You you can't really. There's not much room to to make any money if you were to short it. Um. So I'm not even sure if you can. I doubt you could. It's a penny. I, I don't think you can an OTC stock. I don't think you can short it. But I could be wrong. It goes up one and a half percent, and then the stock should go down one and a half percent. And if the market goes down one and a half percent, the stock should go up one and a half percent. And in the past 52 weeks, the stock went up nearly 30,000 percent. So that means a one dollar investment could have resulted in $298, or a $10,000 investment could have resulted in $3 million. The 52 week low was 0. 0.0001 cents. That is equal to one ten thousandths of a penny. And the high was over 20 cents. And the stock is trading between its 50 day and 200 day moving average. This is a really popular stock. 73 million shares are trading each day on average the past three months. All the shares outstanding are on float. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE since they have negative net income. We can't look at the price of sales since they have no sales. And we cannot look at the price to book since they have negative equity. Their current ratio is zero. They have two hundred thousand dollars of current assets and three million of current liabilities. They have about one hundred fifty thousand dollars of cash on their balance sheet. So it looks like they're going to be short. I've never seen a a current ratio of zero. Um, like I said, when you look at a balance sheet, you have to understand it's it's a snapshot. So it's as of six thirty twenty twenty one. It's kind of like looking into your bank account. Say on six twenty nine you had to pay your friend back like 500 bucks from what he lent you. As of 630, you're 500 dollars less. But if you get paid on 7-1 and you looked at your bank account, it's much higher than 630. So it's just a timing thing. So that's why it's, you gotta look at it a long, over a longer time frame. Fun, since they had negative 1 million of free cash flow in the trailing 12 months and negative 3 million of working capital. So they're going to need more debt or equity financing to run their business over the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratio is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 35 companies in the same industry as DPLS, and they're worse in every single category. They're pre-revenue, so they don't have good ratios. Plus, they have a zero current ratio on their 100% debt. So to summarize, it looks like this company is really struggling, but if they get close to making sales, maybe they could be a really great investment. I rank their free cash flows, revenue, and ratios one out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this uh, th This guy said um, in the comments, because I it's a nice thumbnail. I said, um, what's a thumbnail? Um, uh, this company is a hidden gem. And I also write their technology is super advanced, like super advanced technology, dark pulse. Like, so, and he said, I just said all that stuff to get people to watch it and then tear apart the company. Um, but I have to give them one out of 10 because they're pre-revenue. It's not, I'm not trying to like be mean. It's just that you can't have positive free cash flow or, or even any revenue if you're pre-revenue. And obviously your ratio is going to be weak. So you can't. It's just my format. Every single video, I do the same thing. So do we have a debt crisis before Christmas or after? So so what do you guys think? Any uh, Was it that bad? I, I don't think it's... Um, I've been getting a lot of views lately. Look at, um, I like last month, before like two weeks ago, it was hard for me to get even 2,000 views in a day. It was very rare. Now I'd be getting like 3,000 pretty consistently each day. One day I got 4,000. Um,
Yeah, I guess you missed it. Uh, you could rewatch it. I might get in trouble because it's the algorithm. You jump from like 10K to 18K. Yeah, my subscribers are also improving. I used to get like 30 a day on a good day. Now I've been getting 70, 75, 71, 80. One day I got 126. So it's really, but this happened in January or February of this year. Um, let me see if I can, uh, it, it started really jumping my numbers. So I was getting really excited, but then it came back down. Yeah, these are my views, January, February, like it was like 10,000 in one day. So I was really excited. I was like, well, this, this is working out well. And uh, I got 5,000 subscribers in two months. 1736, which is like 850, right? 868 a month um, on average. I usually get like 300 a month in ad revenue, three to 400 a month. I think it's deserved uploading every day and especially the community posts. Yeah, it took a while, but I don't know if it's going to last. Um, it's just more of a hobby, I guess, even though I spend a lot more time doing this than my, my job. Um, so... And even in the comments of the video, I think Mr. Black said, uh, made a comment in that video. And I, and I, and I wrote to the moon. Like I didn't even like, I never talk, I rarely talk negatively about a stock. Um, you should use common keywords with hashtags. Yeah. You're going to hit a million subs. A million. Uh, I don't know if I could hit a million, but yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen. I mean, I guess anything's possible, but it, that seems, is there any, um, what's that, that stocks CI Camber. Did anybody buy Camber? What what do you, what what do you mean apologizing? Apologizing for what? For a million million subs? Well, for the video, the guy's video. Yeah, I feel that's how, about this guy, the CEO. I feel like like I feel like tense. Everything I say, I, I feel like I have to like kind of like I shouldn't feel that way, right? But I feel like he's gonna whatever I say, he's gonna like tear me apart. Have you heard of? Yeah, so Camber. Yeah, Camber got up there. And I did the video right, right, I think right here. And then it went down 90%. No, 50%, right? And now it's kind of like trading sideways a little bit. It, the truth hurts sometimes. It does. Yeah, I'm the only one. That's why. That's why I started it, thinking I'm doing something different than all the other finance channels. Um, I don't know. It took a while though to get any traction.
any stocks I should pull up? Any um, LTCH, MTTR? Yeah, I think I'm I'm the I'm non-biased at all. Which that's the irony for him to get mad at me. Like I don't really I don't buy hype stocks. Yeah, don't don't buy hype stocks. It's it's such a waste. You'll hit it once. It's like options. You you'll hit the options trade once, but you'll lose the other 20 times. Yeah, no, Kia. I mean, I think I think. Well, let me see what you're talking about. Um, the the forecast. I don't think it's indefinitely. It's not for the rest of. But let's let's pull it up. Um, but what do you, if they have for, if they forecast a negative income in the next couple of years, what would make the stock price go down? If so, wouldn't it make sense to wait until a dip? If who forecast it, you mean if Nokia forecasted negative I mean, you can't really time the market. I mean, even if someone says they're going to lose money next year or their their revenue is going to go down, oh, on that video. Well, the thing is, if you if you wait for um, if you wait for something to happen, um, you're going to miss out on all the upside. You have to buy it before, well before it's on the news, at least, because people buy. It seems like people buy stocks based on the possibility of it going up, so they drive the price higher well before it. They even make any money or or even profitable like tesla and then if if tesla never became profitable and kept losing money and went bankrupt then those people just lose money but they ended up making a lot of people made a lot of money um so people they you, you have to kind of buy before everything happens you can't wait for i mean maybe you could wait for a dip or something like that but I don't know how you could time the market to figure it out. Like if you kind of like, you have to, I mean, I, I have a really difficult time trying to see this stuff into the future. Like you have to connect like a lot of dots. And sometimes you get it, but like you think, oh, this company is great because like this healthcare company because people are getting older and they're going to need healthcare. And so you buy the stock, but it's, it's so hard to. SPRT. Oh, support.com. Oh, wow. I, I do. Have, I did two videos on my portfolio. I'm going to do another one. Every 10,000 subs, I do a portfolio video. I did a 10,000 sub one. But it doesn't change too much. If I do buy something, I usually mention it in the, in the news feeds. SPRT, support.com. This is good. I do so many videos, and you think it'd be easy to track, but it gets real confusing. Like trying to track and then trying to do videos every day. Is there 
on 826 support.com. I've been talking to my buddy about Baba and he's, he's really into it. Um, I want to buy, I want to invest in them. You need money to invest and I don't sell stocks to invest usually. I just, um, Oh, this is the one that was this. Is this a SPAC? Was this a SPAC support.com? I would have thought you had a spreadsheet. I do have a spreadsheet. I'll show you. This is every video I've ever done, and I don't have the results for every video because I, I just added this field like maybe six months ago. So I have the results for every video, the stock price when I used, did the video. But 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 I'm not going to sit here manually going through every ticker and like seeing where they're at. It's. When there's news on a stock, like there was on Macy's, then I looked at my Macy's video and I saw, I predicted it close, but I don't like manually, I guess, I don't even know how, I guess I could get a data dump of all the stock prices for the day. I did that a few times. I did it a few times, like get a data dump of all the stock prices and then look at my stock price prediction compared to it was just too much. It was, I, I did see a lot of close ones, a lot of ones far away. And I just didn't know what to do with the information. I'm just keep, just keep writing about it, telling you guys about it. Green minds, Bitcoin and reverse merged with spirit. That was a deal. So that's right. Uh, yeah. I, I kind of remember that now. What was that chart? Yeah, I, 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 I vaguely remember that one. Um, but yeah, usually when someone makes a comment and says, wow, you, you got really close, then that's when I know about it. And then I may be right in the, um, in the what's it called? the the news feed section of but i mean I, it's just there's just so many stocks to look at so i just stop doing that um but i could see like all the stocks that i said buy sell and ones that are close i i kept adding fields as time went on I have the market cap, all the ratios, because the way I do the videos, like I'm doing Zometica tomorrow, I think. Well, I'll show you. Come on. Okay. Yeah. It's, okay. The way I do the videos is I have this chart in my Excel file and, and then I, this was a tip. So then I just look at the industry, medical care facilities. And, and then I go to this and I look up medical care facilities. And then there was five tickers. 
and I just copy them all to, to the table. And then it auto populates. You see these VLOOKUPs, it auto populates. It looks into this tab and pulls in all the data. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good system, but I probably could pay like 20 bucks a month for like a service and get the information. Because the information here is when I did the video, which could have been months ago. So I do try to update when I do a video, I try to update all these fields, but sometimes they could be a little stale, the data. No, I don't think merch, I don't think anybody will buy it. When did you start building your investing portfolio and did you have a spouse? Create a paper trading account and buy every ticker you make video on. I started, well, I bought my first stock. But I, didn't, I didn't really start building anything until I graduated college in 98. And even then I didn't even buy that much. But I bought my first stock in 90, 95 because I worked at an investment banking firm and there was no internet. So I just, I filled out a form to get by the stock Nordstrom. And, and it wasn't decimals. It was like 33 and one eighth cent, one eighth dollars. It was like in fractions. And free cash flow method does not actually predict it. I don't think anything predicts can predict any company. I mean, it's just all guesswork. You just try to get as close as you can. But I don't. I don't think from at least half the company that I do, I don't think a DCF model does anything. Like like a pre revenue company, DCF, it doesn't really. Um, I just do it to kind of help you with your due diligence and like show you how to go through the financials and give you some information. But with those companies, DCF works with like Google, a company with a stable, consistent revenue and free cash flows or Facebook. Not, not for most of these companies I do. You, you just can't predict this stuff. There's no way. It's just a big guess. But have you have you noticed I changed um let me see like Have you noticed that I changed my DCF model? It used to be, um, wow, I can't believe someone would actually buy merch. I, I changed it, it's much more transparent now. I just show you what the average analyst projects their revenue to grow. For energy transfer is 0.6%. I I use simply Wall Street, but so I, I grow it. It's all formula driven, so I don't have to do anything but but point the growth here. So grow is 0. 0.6 for the next four years. And and then um to get the future free cash flows, I just show you what percent of their revenue, they convert to free cash flow. So I just sum up these four numbers, divide by these four numbers. It was 6% for, for ET. So I just multiply these by 6%. I think it's much more transparent. Has anybody noticed that? You can, you can, I show you where to get the whack from. I don't calculate it anymore. I just pull it from Finbox or simply Wall Street. Let me know. Uh, I think it's 
it's it's easier now for to replicate because I was in in for a while I wasn't even showing how I got my whack. I just said the whack. Okay, maybe it's just me. Um, okay. Anything else? Anybody have any um, anything to talk about? Or should we um, call them night? Did anybody see the live stream with um, BTCS, the Bitcoin trading company? Micron lowered their guidance. Isn't there a chip shortage? I have to look at what they say. And just just so you know, what a company says doesn't mean that's what they really doesn't isn't the truth because it's always presented in a nice way. So you buy the stock. So they never say negative things. But but I thought there was a chip shortage. So there's like a bottleneck. Um, but I, I have to look at what they said about it. But um, yeah, everybody does need chips. Um, they would be a max capacity if they can get access to the um, the material to make the chips. I think there's like a, sh a shortage in, in the materials they need. Um, that's just a guess. Um, do I have a company? Um, not really. Uh, because I can't buy stocks because I usually don't have any money to buy stocks. When I have money, then I buy stocks. Like that video on Upsellera, when I had extra cash that month, I looked for a stock and Upsellera looked good, so I bought it. And and I rarely sell stocks to buy stocks. Um, okay, see you, Lawrence. Um, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, let me get going. I got to work on Zometica for tomorrow. I remember when I did the video the first two times, people bashing me. I mean, it's, they kept saying, oh, in February, it's gonna, it's gonna blow up. Yeah, definitely the chip makers. Um, but it's, it's always hard to know which, you know, which companies it's kind of like, a little tricky. You know there's demand for this stuff, but which company will fulfill that demand? Okay, I'll see you later. Thanks for um thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.